Hello everyone. It's February 13th, 2018. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this episode. And it's just gonna be a fairly short episode talking about chord progressions, what they are and why it's a good idea to practice them. So a chord progression is a sequence of chords, something like this, for example. What exactly is that? Well, a chord, right? A normal chord, either major or minor, is made up of three distinct and different notes, different strings. So right now I'm in the key of C. Let's talk about a C chord, because I think oftentimes we that tends to be the most comfortable, most familiar. And a C chord is made up of a C, an E, and a G, right? Those three notes. Actually, let me try to zoom in here, I think, and get a slightly closer look. Yeah, C, E, G, there we are. So, if we're playing a C chord, you can imagine that the only strings that exist on the harp are the C, E, and G. D doesn't exist, we can't play it, can't play F, can't play an A, and can't play a B. We just have to play these three strings. And the thing is, we can play them like this. We could move up, right? So let's say we move up to our next allowable set of strings. So third finger goes to this one, right? Because we can't play the D, goes to the E. Can't play the F, goes to the G. Can't play the A or the B, go to the C. So again, we have C, E, G, just in a different order. This is called a root position three note chord, this C, E, G. This, with an extra gap between one and two, is a first inversion. And again, if we move up, here's the next note, we could go, we have to go here. Can't play the D, gotta play the E, that's the only string that exists, remember. Here, G, C, E, that's a second inversion C chord, so. And if we go up one more, right, we, we can't play A or B, so we go to C, can't play D, go to E, can't play F, go to G. Here's this shape with only one string in between each finger that we're not playing. Root position C chord again. So there's only those three shapes, and that is a C progression going up. Root, first inversion, second inversion, root, first, second, root. On this harp, I can go to a first inversion. Oop, can't quite see. I have that high C. Um, same thing going down. Sorry, uh, running out of room there. Um, and of course, this also applies with the left hand. Same idea. Uh, you can kind of see that, I guess. Um, So that is a chord progression, uh, a sequence of chords going up and down in a sense in the most logical progression they could do, assuming these strings didn't exist, the ones that aren't part of that chord. And it's very helpful to be able to do something like that without really having to think about it, right? One of these things where if we see that on the page, we can see that. And not have to read each individual note, but just to find that pattern. Say, oh yeah, this is just a, a C progression. Um, it's a great thing to practice with both hands, right? So we find a root. First, second, root. And do that progression. Now, we can do that with C, we can do it with any chord. So for example, staying in the key of C, maybe we go down and we find, hmm. So C, the thing about C is we're always playing the red C string. So visually, right, it's the same shape no matter what chord we're playing, but visually we have this C to kind of anchor ourselves with. With either the E or the G chord 
sequence, um, we're, we're playing none of the colored strings. So let's take this E, which in this case will be an E minor, but whether we have the G sharp or not, doesn't really matter in terms of the shape and the strings that we're playing. So that root position shape, first inversion. And again, for me, I don't even have to think about where I'm going next, but you might find, okay, where am I supposed to go next? And again, remember the only notes that exist are the E, the G and the B. So third finger goes going to where the second was, second's going to where two was, thumb is going to where the third finger was, which is, but up an octave. So it was on this E down here. Now we're going up to this E up here. Conveniently, there are seven strings in an octave, right? A through G, seven days of the week. You could say, okay, Sunday, I'm gonna do some C progressions. Monday, I'll do D. You could do it in the key of D. If we have an F sharp, those are all D majors. Or D minor, it doesn't really matter. It's always the same shape, but visually, right, it's maybe slightly different, and you might find that some are easier or harder than others. So this is this is a good kind of um, litmus test to see, is this easy? If it's easy for you, it's not necessarily something you need to spend a ton of time practicing. If it's not, if it's not automatic, it's a very helpful and useful thing to practice enough that it does become automatic. So you might find that maybe instead of doing one in each day, you might spend a week. I'm gonna spend a week trying to get a C progression to feel automatic. It might take that long, it might take longer, it might take less, who knows? And then next week, I'm gonna do those the D, right? And see if I can get that to, so the hands and fingers just automatically go from here to the next one. And again, it's, it's the same progression of shape, right? Root position, first inversion, extra gap between one and two, Second inversion, extra gap between two and three, back to root. So hopefully it all starts to become automatic. Let's also talk about four note chord progressions because those are a little trickier. So here, for example, is a root. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see that. Root position, you can't really see the fingers on the strings that well, but root position C chord, right? C, E, G, C. This is root position. We now have four notes. If, so this, here's a four note chord progression. Maybe I'll use the right hand so you can see the notes a little bit easier, the strings, right? Same idea. We've only got three possible shapes, root position. Again, move up, first inversion, move up, second inversion, root. But unlike the three note chord progressions where if we're doing both hands together, they're both doing the same shape, right? Root, both first, both second, both root, just an octave apart. If I find a root in the left hand, this C is occupied. So again, C, E, G, C, E, G, C, E. If we continue up on, the, on these notes that are part of the C chord, the only notes that exist, right? The only strings that we can play, that we're allowed to play if we're playing a C chord. Root in left hand, first inversion in the right hand. So that can be quite challenging to try to wrap one's mind and around and, and get one's fingers to cooperate that, and okay, next one, oh, okay, what's hard enough just to find this first inversion here, and what do we got to do here? Continue up, second inversion, oh, and second inversion, oh, root here, and back to root and first inversion. So again, the goal is to try and have that be automatic, to feel as if instead of two separate things, that it's just one, one connected thing, one big hand on either side of the harp, finding this big C chord, right? It's the only, uh, just notes that are part of a C chord, there we are, or, or you know, G chord. So 
again, super handy, really useful to have that be automatic. Um, I'll leave you with two more thoughts. One is this, these chord progressions, you can practice them arpeggiated. Whether you're doing three, two, one, three, two, one, or one, two, three, one, two, three, just kind of fun. Again, great practice. And it, but thinking about these is these shapes, right? We find them as one shape. And that kind of brings me to the second point with the four finger chords, I think something that can cause problems is how do we find them? So many notes. I would suggest thinking about your middle two fingers that rather than say placing from the bottom, try to build it from here or placing from the top, which I don't see people do as often, but I think this is kind of a common thing. Okay, I gotta, I'll start with a fourth finger and get everything placed. Think about finding the middle two notes and let the outsides fall on as a result of that. Also think about finding the shape in the air as you go, for example, to find this first inversion right here, you're stretching out and you're creating a little bit of an extra gap between two and three to find that shape or between three and four to find this shape. And again, it, it wants to feel kind of like one impulse, one movement. So rather than individual fingers, it's just this one shape. Try thinking about moving from the middle of the chord, with two and three leading the way. You might find that makes it a little bit easier to find those shapes. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found that useful and I will see you in two weeks time. Cheers. <laughs>